I had a chance to play the Street Fighter VI closed beta and it was a magnificent. And I've actually got two simple things we can work on to get ready for six. And frankly, this also applies to like any fighting game. This is just good tips. And that is go to therapy, get a job. But yeah, the two actual things are spacing and actively asking yourself, what is my opponent doing? Two very simple things that are surprisingly hard to do in the midst of battle. Spacing is exactly how it sounds. It's really just how you space yourself from your opponent. And if there's a specific spacing I wanna keep, I just keep this distance, what you're seeing on screen, as I'm keeping my spacing. And, and one of the biggest reasons for this is it allows us to kind of alleviate our mental stack from having to constantly juggle between things that can happen and hard to target certain normals and moves that the opponent might do. Let me explain. So I'm just gonna have uh, Ryu do a, a sweep. Let's jump oh, yeah. a sweep. And then the idea is I'm gonna try to space myself around this. If I keep this spacing, Ryu's sweep will never actually oh, yeah. ever touch me. That means if I don't think about anything else, just maintain this spacing, I know for a fact I can punish with something just on reaction of the animation. And the thing is, this doesn't apply to just that sweep. I can also do something like, I know a lot of reviews do this at that kind of mid range spacing, right? At the spacing, the solar plexus also whips. So if I just turn both of them on, I just need to react to the animation. Don't even have to move. But wait, what if they jump in? Let's test it out. It's easy. Let's see if we can dragon punch. Of course we can. Medium. Of course we can. Crouching heavy punch. Yes, we can. We can. We have anteaters at the spacing too. Now at the spacing, all we need to worry about is standing still and reacting to the animations. There it is. See, all three very easy. Uh, one thing to note as you're trying to figure out these spacings and you're testing things out is the idea of a heart box and the fact that it changes depending on the move and depending if you're, if you're standing or crouching. All right, so I got this in paint, okay? So like imagine this green circle or uh, rectangle is the hurt box. When you're standing, the hurt box is around this big and when you're crouching, it gets it gets smaller, but it fattens up. That's what a hurt box is. And basically, like imagine this hand, like imagine that was a standing heavy punch. What ends up happening is this is a red box. This is what we call a hit box. It ends up like extending out like this. And then during the animation, it might also create some hit hurt boxes kind of like this. So the reason for these extra hurt boxes is usually to kind of match the animation. Let's say the Ryu was doing this attack where the hurt box is like the hit box is like this. So like if this he read overlapped with this green, this Ryu's gonna get hit. So th that's how like hurt boxes and hit box come into play. But the main thing I want to get through is the idea of hurt boxes and the fact that when you're uh, crouching versus standing, it changes. Uh, and when you're attacking, it tends to move along with the animation to match it somewhat. Definitely note that there isn't one catch all solution spacing for everything generally even this example right now this is this spacing is just based off sweep and the solar plexus but let's say the opponent is something like oh this this guy is with punishing everything you know what i'm just going to be more aggressive with the fireballs heavy fireball very fast strong poke um if i stay at this spacing and then i'm constantly looking for that button to whiff and once again the opponent's going to be moving back and forth so i'm going to be moving back and forth every so often i'm just going to get hit by that fireball and even when i'm blocking it I, I take some chip damage and i'm just never going to get a chance to sweep and now if i notice this the solution might be okay i might want to take my glass spacing and then space out a little bit further out so i can react a little bit better as in if i start standing around here i can react a little bit easier and you know work accordingly but the question now is why is spacing so important in street fighter 5 or street fighter 6 it's important in both do, do not do not do not get this wrong it's important it's it's important in like every street fighter but why is it so important in street fighter 6 in my opinion it's twofold so one street fighter 6 spacing is a lot easier to uphold and two with punishing is a lot easier Meaning if you can maintain good spacing and keep that, you know, at in forefront of your mind, you're going to be getting rewarded much higher and more often comparatively to Street Fighter V. Okay, so check this out. Oh, did you see how far that was? Just keep watching. 
that that was a punish counter. That was a punish counter. And mind you, I'm 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 I'm, I'm working with crouching medium kicks here. The Street Fighter Five test that we did earlier, those were sweeps. That's crouching heavy punch, heavy kick. I'm working with mediums here. But he was that far. He whiffed that far away and that like whiffed whiffed. I still reacted with the crouching heavy kick. Boom. Her boxes in this game don't match with the animation perfectly during recoveries a lot of the time. So I imagine the hitbox is something like this and the hurt box is probably something like that. What happens in this game is you see how big this is. Um, when it gets to even this part of the animation, his feet was over here. But what ends up happening is imagine this red hitbox is gone. It's not a hitbox anymore because he's not kicking anymore, but this hurt box lingers during the recovery, which allows for this interesting situation. I'm hitting thin air, but he still gets hit and punish counters. So just with punishing in general in this game is so much easier. And also because of those lingering hurt boxes, as well as these long ass normals, uh, spacing becomes a lot easier too. Let's watch that again, just for uh, posterity's sake. Fireball easy with sweep easy from the max range. It's perfect. But now on to something that's a little bit more esoteric. Asking yourself, what is my opponent doing and reacting accordingly? And much like the spacing, this applies to every fighting game. But why do I bring it up for Street Fighter 6? It is in fact because there's a lot of very strong universal mechanics every character has it that gives you answers for everything and also one of those answers it, it, it's so strong drive impact it's it's a move that gives you three hits of armor and if it hits them and then they're near a corner you get a free combo off of it if it counter hits get a crumple and you can do a full combo off of it it's it's very it's, it's strong and so I, we can actually look into a uh, match i played as an example let's check out this match I am the Luke, uh, the name is Pucker Time because we like puckering here. And then uh, whenever I see the fireballs, I try to just use the drive impact to get through because it's again, hits of armor. And if it counter hits, I get a full combo. So it feels like a good option against fireballs at high close range. I'm still just kind of feeling my opponent at this point. Nothing's really happening except my drive impacts I don't feel very strongly. I think something happens here actually relatively soon where my, I think my opponent, yeah. So even with all of this offense that I've generated, the opponent has noticed I'm going kind of ham with my drive impacts. So I feel like the Ryu decided, okay, I should really react to these drive impacts. And here we go. I drive impact. He reacts with his own. And he should have done like, uh, like my health should be after this combo. I, it should be like down here. I should have gotten punished hard. Luckily, it is the beta and no one knows how to punish. So, you know, I got away scot-free. Mm, great to jump by me with no conversion because the game awesome. So here is a thing that I've noticed starting from that drive impacts. The first one is oh okay, I'm asking, I'm noticing okay my opponent you know is doing drive impact offensively too, especially now that I'm near a corner. So I'm not defensively pressing buttons as much. And once and because of that, I am able to react with my own drive impact right here. I get a little bit of a nice combo, but I win that round. I'm just doing jabs, crouching medium kick. I am not canceling into fireball. Because, once again, I've noted in my head, hey, this person's willing to drive impact. So I'm pressing these buttons one at a time so that I can cancel into drive impact, if anything. This situation is very sad. I did not know that Ryu, not Ryu, Luke had this target combo. And I was actually trying to crush medium kick into the drive impact, but I got the target combo instead, so I get, I get smashed instead. Ooh, I dropped the combo. Unfortunate punish this time for the fireball, but we're chilling. I'm still upholding those jabs so that I can properly react to the drive impact. Hopefully I get the combo this time. Yes, sir. Combos, baby. We got those. But I'm chilling, dog. I'm chilling. Just cancels. Just really likes doing a lot of these special cancels. Drive impacts destroys people that cancel their normals and specials without thinking. So, drive impact. Nice ant here, finally. 
don't react to that drive impact, but it's fine because it's in the mid screen. I'm not too scared about that. Nice jump in. Yo, do I get the full combo? Oh, oh, that's hot. Sick combo. Mmm, I like this. So, at this part, I still have that same idea of him using drive impact pretty. Uh, not, whatever the opposite of sparingly is. He's very loose with his drive impacts. So, even the pressure that I do here is very kind of oriented in that. Where I do meaty throws, or near meaty throws, because I know it's it beats drive impacts. And even the buttons pressure, I'm not canceling into anything it's so that I can react. Right? You know, I just do some jabs here. Do I do crouch and medium punch because that is cancelable. And look at that, I cancel into the drive impact based on his drive impact. And I get this full combo and delicious, delicious win. This video specifically, I just kind of focused around drive impact because it's such a strong mechanic and it was so prevalent during the beta. It, it was a very good candidate. But, of course, the idea of what is my opponent doing it applies to other things as well. Back on Street Fighter V with Karen and Ken, stuff like jumps, dashes, are things to keep note of by asking yourself, what is my opponent doing? But it can apply to very specific situations too. Here is an example where I have reported Ken doing fishing like this. He's fishing with those crushing medium punches and crushing medium kicks, you'll see a lot. You'll see Ken's doing this every so often because they can confirm both crouch and medium kick and crouch and medium punch into big buttons, right? And let's say, as Karen, my initial idea and what I want to do is do these crouch and medium kicks. However, maybe I'm bad at spacing or maybe my timing uh, for my opponent is completely off. And I say, oh no, I'm getting beat out and I'm unable to keep up with this Ken doing all these moves at this range. So what I might do is realize, hey, this kid is doing mediums at this range constantly and trying to move up and do these mediums and trying to confirm. I'm having a trouble at this range because for whatever reasons. I know in Street Fighter V, there's a priority system and crush counters where the priority system makes it so my heavy buttons straight up beat out mediums um, when they collide at the same time. And two, we have heavies that have crush counter properties where it makes it very easy for me to convert off of and get big damage. So what Karen might do, especially in this specific situation that I've laid out is say, okay, this guy's fishing with mediums. You know what? I'm gonna step back a little bit further where it's easier and I have more breathing room and start just uh, poking or try to counter poke with standing heavy kick. So going into the game, instead of playing in the pocket where for some reason I am having a hard time getting hit constantly with these mediums, I might start moving back out here Right, where I don't have to worry as much. It's gonna whiff and then start poking with this standing heavy kick. And look at that, I got a crush counter. Again, uh, the problem is I don't know how to play Karen, so I don't know how to actually convert off of that, but you can convert off of that. But yeah, this was an example that is very specific to five that you will see pretty often. Um, just because crush counters are very strong and certain characters have very good pokes that lead to crush counters. So how do you go about practicing this in Street Fighter V? It's really just like after every round, get used to asking yourself, what did my opponent do? And then try to remember just one thing. And if you can, awesome. If you can't, try again late and then try again next round. And then the thing is, if you keep asking yourself this, every so often you'll start to be able to pick out more specific things. And then when you get used to that, you'll eventually kind of start developing a sense during the match where you're like, or during the round where you're like, oh, wait a minute, this guy, is, this, this, this person is jumping a lot, or this person's constantly fishing with crouching medium kick. It becomes natural the more you practice, so it really is just something you can start by just asking yourself at the end of the round, at the end of the match, at the end of the set and then build up from there. And watching replays and a high level player's play uh, does help with this to an extent um, because you can pull intent and answers from those replays in higher level matches. You can see stuff working and you can see stuff not working and you can logic out the answers and the whys so that when you're in the heat, when you're in the matches, um, those answers will come to you faster.